following video presentation is an output of the CFC EU financed project on protected agriculture being implemented by CARDI in Haiti, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago to assist PA production of vegetables and herbs in the Caribbean. Protected agriculture structures were developed from greenhouses to provide a level of control over environmental factors, thereby providing the optimal conditions for plant growth and production. Initially, the first environmental factor was primarily temperature, but this has been expanded with the progression of technology to light, water, humidity, and pests. There are different levels of protection depending on crop characteristics, requirements, and environmental conditions. In some situations, it may not be necessary for complete protection. The following should be considered in determining suitability and features of protected agricultural structures. Crop, location, type of structure, and costs. The key considerations in selecting a crop include understanding the market, especially in terms of supply and demand, and how the produce is to be sold. The farmer should understand the reasons behind price fluctuations and some of the problems associated with conventional production, like pests and or disease controlled and flooding. The PA farmer must also determine what infrastructure is required to grow the crop inside the PA structure by providing the optimal condition. This involves weighing the options with structural design, crop density or spacing, media, trellis support systems, irrigation, fertigation, etc. There are a number of factors that the PA farmer should be mindful of when selecting a suitable site to set up his structure. These factors should recreate as closely as possible an environment for the crop's natural growth. The closer the conditions, the less infrastructural modifications are required and the lower the infrastructural cost. Although there are many protected agriculture structure designs, the three most common designs found in the Caribbean are the gable, the arch, and the split arch. The main constraint to completely enclose the PA structures, especially in the humid tropics, is high temperatures. It is not uncommon to find temperatures reaching greater than 40 degrees Celsius by mid-morning. The solution to this problem is to find a cost-effective, reliable method of cooling. Most completely enclosed designs rely on passive ventilation to cool them and have design features to assist this. These include additional ventilation to the top as in split-roof designs to force a pressure differential to extract the hot air at the top of the structure, high side walls in excess of 3 meters or 10 feet, orientation of the structure to the prevailing wind, and the use of large meshes to facilitate air movement. In most areas of Trinidad and at sea level in the other islands of the Caribbean, the wind is not consistent or strong enough for adequate ventilation as stated before. As such, optimal conditions cannot be achieved using passive ventilation, despite use of the best designs. It may therefore be practical to use larger meshes or remove mesh sections in certain parts for example, the roof vent in split roof structures, or even have open sides. Another alternative is the use of forced ventilation by the incorporation of extractor fans, but this requires reliable electricity. Only Trinidad has the cheapest electricity in this part of the world. Alternatively, solar power is a possibility. Ultimately, cost and sustainability become an issue. With regard to size, the larger the growing surface area under cover, under the same height, means the greater the internal temperature. Therefore, there is a greater need for ventilation. The maximum width to use is approximately 10 meters or 36 feet, and the length should not be more than about 22 meters or 70 feet. For large structures wider than 10 meters and longer than 22 meters, forced ventilation is recommended. High humidity environments, greater than 80%, do not facilitate evaporative cooling as a feasible option. The use of evaporative systems, wet pad cooling and misting, is most beneficial and efficient only in the short dry periods of the year 
where the relative humidity is below 50%. The cost and or benefit should be carefully considered and would depend on climatic conditions of the area. Light is one of the three most important components in growing any crop. Preference should be given to coverings with greatest transmission over its protective life, yet which are durable and strong. It is important that cleaning management practices be carried out routinely to ensure maximum transmission of light through the roof and sides and maximum ventilation through the mesh sides. In addition, good environmental maintenance practices are also required. These include removal of trees, shrubs, vines, bushes and grass on and in close proximity to protected agriculture structures and continued maintenance of this environment to ensure the best ventilation conditions for the structure. Nearly all greenhouse systems can be automated. Generally, the more a structure is automated, then the greater the cost of the structure. One needs to consider carefully the cost and benefit of automation against labor and management and the overall cost of the protected agriculture structure as well as the profitability of the crop. Success in protected agriculture depends on choosing the best structures and features, thereby providing the optimum growing conditions with the foresight in striking a balance between the costs of management, the science of growing a valuable crop, and maintenance of the structure and its systems. It is a means to obtaining significant profits from the greatest yield with the best quality of the harvest produced.